You know, a wise man once told me, he actually stopped me on the street just to say this, I thought it was weird at the time, but what he told me is that the best hamburger always begins with the bun. And I've been carrying that with me all this time, and I think it's about time that I let that information loose and give it to somebody else. So uh, we're going to be making a hamburger in like a three or four part series, and part one is going to be making the buns. Uh, but the twist uh, with this one is we're going to be using geometry nodes, since I want this to be entirely procedural, uh, specifically for placing the sesame seeds. So uh, with Bunder open, I want to make sure that you have, you need to make sure really, uh, that you have 2.93 or 2.92 and above because uh, geometry nodes does not exist in earlier versions. So make sure you're up to date. And other than that, uh, make sure you get a reference image. Here's the hamburger we're going to be using. I don't know if this is a Wendy's, a McDonald's, a Burger King burger. All I know is that it looks very good and we're going to be using it for reference. Okay. So bunch of layers, bunch of stuff to do. Don't have time to waste. Let's make the buns. Okay. Uh, so the first part in any process is just obliterating the default scene. Let's just get rid of it. And we're going to go to the side view and let's import in some reference. I'm just going to use this hamburger. Boop. You can literally just drag and drop. I don't know if it's new. I don't know if it's old, but it's a thing. Okay. Um, and pretty much for all of this, we're going to be using the reference image just to model everything uh, to scale, at least proportionate to each other. Okay. So we have our image. Let's model the bun. To do this, shift A, uh, we're going to do a cylinder. Why a cylinder? Because this thing is rotationally symmetric, right? It's almost as if this thing's kind of a distorted cylinder already. And if we have a, a side view of this, then we can easily kind of make it using only that information. Okay. Uh, so with the cylinder, edit mode, wireframe, just so we can see the whole thing and actually select all these vertices. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Um, with this thing, uh, first of all, let's position it kind of in the right spot. Edit mode, and I'm going to take these top vertices and bring them down so they are the correct height. Okay. So I'm moving on the Z axis, which moves like all of this, uh, the, the entire ring together is a good way to think about it. Okay. Um, okay, we have our cylinder placed. Next, I want to start like scaling these rings so they're roughly the right size. We can add in more rings by Control R. They're called loop cuts, but I'm calling them rings like a, a Sonic type character. You, you know, I don't know how much you guys know about the furry. I, I know this is a bit of a tangent. I don't know. And before I get into the story, I'm just going to be adding loop cuts and scaling. Uh, that's why it's not important. Um, either way, I don't know how far down you've got. You guys have gone down the furry rabbit hole. But uh, one, one thing you'll find surprising is that 90, 95% of it is all like Sonic based. I don't know if it's just like, oh, Sonic's like the place to be or if that was just the origin of the fetish. <laughs> uh, but that, that, that might just be. By the way, I'm going to be doing a sponsored thing at the end of this, at the end of the series. Hopefully they don't mind. You know, I'm just trying to pass the time. I'm trying to keep it PC. I'm trying to keep it PC. Um, either way, you, you'll, you'll find it surprising how, mo how much of it is Sonic and Knuckle based. You wouldn't expect them to be there, but whatever. Okay. Uh, we have a bun. Uh, it kind of looks, kind of looks bad. <laughs> uh, but what we can do is we can take this, add in a subdivision surface modifier, and now we have a smooth bun. Of course, we're going to get some pull uh, issues. You're going to see this uh, triangle uh, fan, right? This weird shading. Um, we can either like smooth that out or what's even better. You know, we want to add in some geometry, okay? Uh, so we're going to go to edit mode. We're going to take this and uh, we can inset it. And you can see this is just going to take the issue and kind of inset or offset the um, where we see it, the visibility of it to the center. So we're just kind of taking this and moving the problem away, okay? Uh, so what I want you to do, inset, just pretty far in. And we're also going to add in a bit more geometry. Uh, by the way, the reason we're doing this is I'm thinking I, I want more than just the sesame seeds to be procedural. I also want to be able to control the shape of the bun procedurally, right? It's not going to be just this perfect, like, cylindrical thing. I want it to have distortion and stuff. So we're going to do displacement. So, you know, add in some geometry. Either way, uh, th th that was just uh, surprising to me. Moving on. Uh, take this, shade smooth. We're going to apply a displace modifier. Important thing about the displace modifier, it is in in order, right? Um, it is after the subdivision surface, right? These are going to give different results once we actually use a texture, okay? So first we add in geometry, then we displace. Um, how are we going to do it? We're going to do it with a texture. So again, you just hit new. Uh, which texture? We're going to load in the one we just created. Uh, we can use clouds, and that's just like a base... Uh, uh, I don't know, procedural. It's a, it's a generated noise that comes with Blender. Okay. Couple settings, size, you want to bring it up. This is just kind of like the scale of the distortion. If you kind of look at the size of this image, uh, we want there to be very little detail. So it actually is big, uh, low frequency kind of stuff. It basically, I'm trying to smooth it out. Okay. So bring the size up to a big number. The depth you want to keep below because this is kind of like the, uh, it's kind of like the steps of detail almost if you want to think about it. So either keep it at one or two. One is for very smooth, two adds in a, a bit of bumpiness. Uh, you take this, you take the strength, we're going to set it to zero so it's not there, and then we're going to gradually just add a bit. And you can see 
uh, what, what does this do? It just adds in a bit of displacement. Kind of looks like you're pushing Play-Doh down. So it's almost satisfying. This might be an interesting way to go on making some stop motion clay stuff. Okay, either way, uh, we have the first bun. Uh, we're gonna be messing with this one again in a bit once we're adding the sesame seeds. I'm just gonna save out the scene. Uh, but first we need to make the bottom bun. And as far as I understand, I don't know why I need a reference for this, right? But in my head, the bottom bun uh, doesn't have any sesame seeds. I really do not know for sure. Um, but I guess I should look at reference to see if that's the case. I don't really know. Uh, scale, shift Z to scale on everything except the Z axis. So it looks like that, right? Shift Z. Uh, that's just a good way to scale. Um, what was the point? The point is that my cylinder's gone. What did I do? Uh, the point is, I don't know if this bottom bun is supposed to have sesame seeds. I'm just not going to add it in for this one. Uh, so this bun's just for show, right? We're going to do all the complex node stuff up here. Um, same process as last time. Just add in some loop cuts. Uh, with that loop cut, you want to scale into where it should be. Also do this with the uh, bottom row and stuff like that. The more detail you add, the better, but it's not too big of a deal because at the end, we're again going to add in a subdivision surface. And uh, by the way, other than the insetting trick, let's go to solid view. So let's do a bit of the insetting trick. Just add in some uh, more geometry. And we can also do that on the uh, bottom. So I know that this part's just modeling. It's boring. I mean, there, there's some blunder channels entirely based off of modeling. They seem to do fine, but whatever, I find it boring. Um, a trick other than the insetting, if you want this to be kind of a sharp edge with less of rounding um, after you add the subdivision surface, so this is without, right? It has this crisp edge, uh, but when we add in the uh, subsurf, where did it go? The uh, subsurf, we get a lot of curvature. Uh, you can add in a loop cut and just bring it very close, and that's going to add in uh, some tightness on that uh, corner. Just a thing. Uh, shade smooth, whatever. I mean, yeah, there, there, there's a bunch of modeling only channels, Josh Gambrel, whatever, they seem to do fine. Uh, for this displacement, I think we can actually use the same texture, but for the strength, we want it to be uh, its own custom value, something like that. Okay, um, so at this point, we've modeled buns. You know, I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna clickbait the shit out of this video. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna call it, like lots of buns, some kind of innuendo. Uh, we've modeled the bun. Actually, let me just add in a bit of crispness as I was just talking about uh, to this edge, right? just so it's a bit more intense. Uh, we've modeled the buns. Uh, we can control this procedurally, right? We can uh, control the displacement to this one and the other one like on their own, and we can add in more geometry um, just by adding in a higher level of subsurf. That's just a thing we can do. Um, but at this point, we wanna be adding in the seeds, and this is where it gets uh, very new. So uh, with the top bun, we are going to do geometry nodes. How? Well, first of all, you add in a geometry nodes modifier, okay? As far as I understand it, without this modifier, you cannot, um, Whatever node tree you create, it will not do anything to the object, okay? So after all of this, right, in the modifier stack, we're then gonna apply geometry nodes. Then for what geometry nodes are we gonna be using, you go to the geometry node editor, just like the shader editor or anything like that, or compositor or anything that has nodes, right? You shift A to find the nodes. I'm assuming you haven't touched geometry nodes at this point, so I'm just gonna do a bit of a crash course. Uh, shift A to search and, um, this is like this uh, tree is going to be linked uh, to this. So I think we should be able to rename this to like burger or something like this. And then you can see like updates here. Okay. Uh, so whatever node stuff we do here, I want you to think of this as we're basically making a custom modifier is the idea is the idea. Okay. Um, so what do, what do we want this modifier to do? Well, in essence, we want it to take an object like a sesame seed, which we're going to model. And I want it to scatter it in a very specific way. Now, good question. While I make the uh, sesame seed, we talk about both of them at the same time. A uh, good question here is why do I not just like model the sesame seed? And then instead of doing all this like geometry node stuff, why don't I just do it with particles? Well, first of all, uh, wouldn't get as many views. <laughs> That's one thing. But um, mainly geometry nodes, even with scattering, like this uh, simple thing gives us uh, much more control. So I'm just gonna, first of all, let's smooth this out. Kind of same uh, process as before. We can also solidify, although this time we want it to be in the other order. So I'm taking the mesh, I'm adding some thickness uh, with solidify, and then I'm smoothing uh, with this. Uh, back on topic, uh, geometry nodes uh, actually gives us some scattering options that uh, particles do not, and we can control a lot of stuff. And uh, specifically, I'm going to be solving the issue that uh, even Blender Guru can't, where the sesame seeds should not intersect, right? Uh, when you scatter with particles, it's usually an issue uh, where some particles are going to be overlapping when we're instancing the objects. Uh, this has a way to get around that, and I'm actually kind of excited uh, to show it because it's kind of a big deal. Okay, anyways, 
Uh, I've rambled enough, uh, trying not to stutter while making uh, the sesame seed, um, and now we can take this and scatter it. Uh, using that idea that I was just talking about, we can do it without intersection or overlapping, okay? Uh, to do this, we take our model that has the modifier that has the node tree. We say, what do we want? Shift A, well, it's probably gonna be something with points because we wanna scatter points and then instance stuff over them. Um, and then we're gonna go to point, point distribute. Uh, you could either do it like this or you could just, uh, you know, search. Uh, point distribute once you know the name. You just connect it here, okay? Uh, so we've taken this geometry input. We're basically sending it through a point distribution and then sending it out. Um, right now, it's going to get rid of the mesh, but we do have the points and we can control the density and stuff like this, whatever. Um, I want, uh, first of all, to clone or instance the sesame seed on every single point, and then I want to get my uh, burger back, which we need to click uh, through the outliner, I guess. By the way, probably a good time to rename things, so I'm just going to call this uh, Top Boiga. And I'm going to call this one bottom boiga. And then uh, this plane is going to be our sesame seed. And as far as I know, uh, having modifiers on the sesame seed, the thing we're instancing, not a big deal, okay? So top boiga, uh, you distribute the points. And then what, what do we want to do? Well, let's actually just do it through the menu. Point, not distribute, but instance, okay? So we've distributed our points. And now for each point we are going to instance, we are going to send a copy of this object, okay? And you can see it's kind of doing what we want, although the sesame seeds are huge um, and we're still, you probably can't see it, but we still don't have the base mesh under there. Uh, one way to fix this is you can literally take this geometry and scale it down. However, um, we are dealing with nodes, which means we do have a lot of control. Um, so instead of that, let's do something like a point scale, I think is the way to go. So uh, we take point scale. So first we distribute the points, then we're going to modify their size, and then we're going to copy a sesame seed on every one of these. So if I take the point scale, go to vector, in other words, I can control each of these numbers. Well, we then have a uh, controller for this, right? And we can scale only on the x-axis, y-axis, z-axis, whatever. Um, so I'm just going to make them really small, like 0.1 or even like 0.05 for now, and we can change that later, okay? Um, one thing I want you to notice is if you imagine the hamburger bun here, these sesame seeds spawn in kind of normal, flush with the surface, like they're not jutting outwards. They're uh, as if they were like a surfer on the waves. It's a uh, parallel or normal to the surface. It's not normal, the opposite of normal. It's, it's gliding with the surface, okay? So you can see this one's pointing up and they're basically outlining the mesh, okay? Uh, that's going to be important in a bit. But either way, uh, we've scaled them, we've instanced them, and now let's bring back our original geometry. And there's a node for this. It's called join. Uh, geometry basically takes two or three or however many meshes, I think. That's why it has this like weird input, um, which is kind of cool. I think this is a redesign that was done recently. Uh, basically, what this does is it takes an arbitrary number of meshes or maybe just two. I don't know. <laughs> um, it's definitely one of those. And it just uh, combines them together in a way that is faster uh, than the Boolean uh, thing, which could also be used to join, but whatever. Uh, we're going to take this. We are going to join the original geometry. Again, this is our hamburger bun, and we're going to join it with the sesame seeds. So the way you want to think about this, uh, this geometry right here is the bun, and then everything here is the points to distribution. It's the sesame seeds, okay? We join these. By the way, we can shade smooth. Um, second issue, by the way, you can see that they're there, but they're kind of like intersecting or they're kind of inside the surface. Um, one way to fix this is you could do it with uh, nodes. Uh, for this one, I'm just going to do this edit mode trick. So I'm just going to, you know, select the sesame seed, whatever we're instancing, and then just bring it upwards, okay? And we kind of want to look at it here to see when we're hovering above. So we don't want to go too far, but just a bit, okay? Uh, basically, what's happening here is we're just moving it away from its origin and the uh, point distribution, whatever, um, it spawns in the sesame seed at this dot. So if we hover it above, it's going to hover above is the point. Okay. Okay. We have sesame seeds. Um, let's uh, mess around with some nodes now. Okay. Uh, because we have all this control, let's uh, use these parameters. So density is going to say uh, how many, you know, sesame seeds do we want? Uh, we bring this up. We get more sesame seeds. Again, they're going to be normal to the surface um, and everything works. Although a couple of issues, first of all, it's on the bottom of the bun right here. There should be a transition to like a more bready uh, looking material. And there's not sesame seeds there usually. Uh, so we don't want to spawn them down here. Uh, but second of all, and this is a big deal, I'm probably going to make a standalone video just on this because it's a big deal. Um, these sesame seeds, they're intersecting, okay? Uh, luckily, there's now, finally, there wasn't before, but this is the first time there's a way around this. How do we fix it? We change our point distribution mode, not from random, so just you know, puts points randomly. Uh, we take that and change it to Poisson, who's a mathematician, a disk. You're going to see when we do this, nothing happens. However, uh, the main difference is we get something called the distance slider. What the distance slider does is it says no two points can be within 
blank uh, distance. Okay, so right now it's zero, so it's kind of off. But if we increase this, you can see um, now we're, we've essentially gone rid of the intersection because no two points can be within 0.13 distance. Okay, so basically it's using some kind of Poisson disk algorithm. I don't know what it means, but um, it avoids intersection, which is the point. And we can uh, still mess around with all these other sliders. So I want my sesame seeds to be smaller so I can scale them down. Um, I want, I mean, I, I guess that's really it. By the way, we also have a seed thing, so I want to change the seed. And that that's just gives us random distributions. Um, all of these are not going to be intersecting is the point. Okay, cool. Um, another thing, how do we get rid of the thing on the bottom like we talked about? Well, um, if we could paint or use vertex or weight paint or one of these, if we could define a map and say this is where we want or actually don't want sesame seeds, um, then we can import that in this uh, attribute, which we're going to talk about. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to weight paint. I'm going to go to our object. What's this called? Object data vertex groups. You're going to see when we paint, we automatically get a group. Uh, that's important. Okay. So I'm just going to paint. Um, and I, what, what I want you to think about this as is this is the area where we want sesame seeds. So I'm just going to rename this to sesame. Um, I'm pretty sure this name's actually pretty important because this is now an attribute. It's basically data uh, that we can import in. That's what an attribute is. And I think we should be able to just type in this name. Yeah. Um, make sure these names are matching. So if we update it here, you have to update it here. So let's see if we add an S. Yes, it breaks, right? You need to update uh, the S um, in the node. Uh, but what's the point? The point is you can kind of draw a uh, custom seeing like what happens as you do it. And you can also like change the seed at any time. It's still going to obey the distribution law that you've uh, made. Um, we can basically paint an attribute. And uh, the idea of attribute, again, data that we can uh, create or modify or whatever, it's going to be important because we're about to mess with them again. So I'm just going to, you know, do this roughly. doesn't need to be perfect. You can go back and mess with this is the point, uh, which is the, the thing about nodes. It's procedural. We can always go back. Okay. Uh, we have this. Um, speaking of attributes, we want to randomize some of the attributes. For example, each of these points, or I guess you could think of them as the sesame seeds, but really they're spawning on points. Uh, each of these points has an attribute called scale. We actually messed with it right here, right? We changed the scale. Uh, it also has an attribute called rotation. There's an attribute called normal, stuff like this. So we're going to mess with it. So uh, first of all, let's uh, mess with the rotation. So I don't want all the sesame seeds to be pointing. Um, oh, I mean, I do want them to be kind of flush with the surface, but they shouldn't all be pointing like upwards towards the center of the bun, like a ant colony. Try it's it's just creepy to be honest, right? Um, there, there's some variation. In fact, there seems like there's a lot. Some of them are pointing down, sideways, whatever. Okay. Um, so how do we do this? Well, we've distributed the points again. Order of operations matters. Uh, we've scaled them. And now I want to uh, randomize their rotation. So uh, we go to attributes, and I think, yeah, there's attributes, and there's a whole bunch of stuff just to mess with these things. Uh, we're going to go to attribute randomize, okay? So we take an attribute, whatever it may be. In this case, it's going to be rotation. And you got to memorize these names. It's not rotate. It's rotation. Make sure you spell that correctly. And we want to take the rotation and randomize it, okay? Um, basically, there's a whole bunch of sliders and stuff here. We're not going to mess with too many of them. You can randomize them based off of a single number, which is what float is. You could do a vector, so you can mess only with like the Z rotation and only the Y rotation, whatever. Um, I'm going to do float. So this is just going to me mess with all of them at the same time using a single slider, okay? Uh, we've randomized this. Um, however, um, even though we've now messed with the rotation, each one of them should now be random uh, from its initial thing and uh, ideally independent from each other, so no sesame seeds are like linked to each other. Um, even though we've randomized it, you can see we still want it to be flush to the surface. And yesterday, I was going crazy on the little Blunder Nest Discord. I'm like, how do I do this? How do I do this? And I actually ended up answering my own question uh, before anybody could uh, help me with that. So that, that was pretty cool. Uh, the answer is you go to align rotation to vector. I'm assuming the only reason this node exists is to solve this issue. So again, we need to orient these to the normals, okay? So first of all, we've randomized our rotation, this attribute. Now we want to mess with it in a way that it actually respects the normal, the direction outwards of the surface, okay? Um, so you add in this node, okay? Then what do you do? Uh, for the vector that we want to align rotation to vector, right? This is the vector. Um, instead of, you know, putting one in custom that we can, you know, do stuff with, um, I'm going to change this to attribute because each point is going to have a different, like, reference normal of the mesh, okay? Okay. Um, so for this vector, just type in normal, and you can see it updates. Um, and then you just got to pick the right one of these. So Y is almost correct, although it's perpendicular, so it should be Z. 
And you can see this fixes the issue. Now these are flush uh, with the surface, but we can still randomize these because the um, alignment happens uh, after. If you do this the other way around, uh, you're gonna have an issue, okay? So order of operations matters. So you can see now it's like messed up again. So I'm just gonna go back to the original. Um, and uh, by the way, we also have a factor to control this, but whatever. And you could do this with an attribute and all this. So you could, you could have some sesame seeds kind of poking out if that's what you want. But for me, that's not what I want, okay? Okay, so we've done the rotation. Let's also randomize the scale. So now that they're here, uh, we can change their size. I guess there's probably technically a correct spot for this, but I'm just going to put it here. And I guess we wouldn't need this node anyways, but whatever. Doesn't matter. Attribute, randomize. After their rotation, I want to randomize not their rotation, but their size or scale. And generally, if you can think of the name for this, uh, hopefully the naming convention is what you think it is, okay? Uh, so for the maximum, I want, I guess, 0.035 is what we picked. And for the minimum, in other words, each one of these is going to get a random, like, scale value. The smallest it could be in zero, is 0, the biggest it can be is 0.035. I want the smallest uh, sesame seed to be, like, I don't know, 0.02. So none of them are too small, whatever. And you can mess around with this. So again, um, all of this is procedural. We can increase the density, although it doesn't let us, right, unless we bring down the uh, scale bit so they can be a bit closer. Um, you can mess with all this, mess with the distribution, whatever. But at this point, and by the way, one more thing I want to mention, and then we'll move on to materials. Again, because all of this is basically a custom modifier is the way you want to think about this. Um, and it still respects this hierarchy. Uh, we can still at any time change the uh, displacement and you can see the sesame seeds are kind of sticking with it. It's trying its best. Sometimes it moves so much that it needs to generate uh, new points because the distance between them has like shrunk. Uh, it's kind of like something to do with geodesics. Don't worry about it if you don't know anything about like differential geometry or whatever. Uh, but you can see this uh, moves uh, with it. However, if we were to put this above, you're gonna notice that now uh, it's not working the way it's supposed to because now it's also displacing the sesame seeds. Um, so order matters. If you take anything away from this tutorial other than the whole furry thing from before, <laughs> uh, take away this order hierarchy stuff mattering, okay? Okay, cool. So we've done that. Let's do uh, materials. And for this, um, I guess ideally you, you just want to do some like projection textures and stuff like this. Um, but for my purpose, I'm just going to do some like procedural material stuff because it seems like we're doing everything procedurally here, okay? Uh, shader editor. Um, we're going to make a material, I guess, first of all, for the sesame seed, then for the top bun, and then a very similar one for the bottom bun, maybe even identical, okay? Um, so starting off uh, with the sesame seed, or I guess with our render scene, let's uh, switch over to cycles just so I get like a good render results. So I want to kind of set up my lighting and environment. I'm going to go to film. Enable transparent. This is just going to make your background invisible. Why do I do this? Uh, because I'm going to add in an HDRI, right? This is to add in lighting without actually adding in lights. You got to be lazy, right? Um, and I don't want to see it in the background. Okay, that's why I did it. So you go to environment texture in the world tab. And I'm going to load in which environment texture? Uh, one of these. HDRI Haven, any website you could shoot your own. Uh, basically, this is the scene our hamburger is going to exist in. Um, and we could always like swap them out at any time. For this time, for this one, I'm just gonna use this one because I like it. Okay. Um, cool. So we have our lighting. Let's start off with our sesame seed. We make a material, call it Sesame Street Seed. I spelled it I, Sesame Steed. Hilarious. Um, sesame Seed. What do we do with it? Well, uh, anything we do to this material, because it's applied to this, is going to be instanced on every single one of these, right? That's the beauty of this. We don't need to make 100 materials, right? We make one here, and then the copying happens. Um, so ideally, you could hit, hit a E for eyedropper or extract, like I used to call it, and then like sample the color. Although I found that, you know, there's already lighting and stuff baked into this. So maybe you could try to sample kind of like a yellowish tint. And, uh, you know, that kind of works. Um, however, uh, you could always put in the color manually. So I'm just going to desaturate this a bit. And we can always play around with this later. Okay, we have sesame seeds. We can make some of them darker, some of them whatever. But for now, I'm okay with it. Um, next, uh, let's move to the top bun. Uh, we make a material. We're going to call this top bun. Or should I say top gun? Ha, ha, ha. Okay, top bun. <laughs> uh, what do we want to do to this? Well, first of all, uh, we want it to be kind of a burgery type color. So again, you hit E. Uh, while hovering over this E, and then you can just click anywhere on the screen. Um, and we get a nice color. Dude, this reminds me of the SpongeBob uh, GameCube game I used to play. I used to be obsessed with the Krabby Patty, as I think a lot of people were there. It's like, I know it's a show, but I actually do want to know how it's made, right? Um, 
what was the point? The point is we pick a color. Um, is it reflective? I don't know. I mean, it seems to be kind of shiny, but this is kind of like a set dressing. So I'm just gonna bump up the roughness so it ain't as uh, shiny or as reflective. Uh, for the color, I don't want it to be just a single color. And by the way, we're gonna deal with this bottom part uh, later. Uh, but for now, let's just deal with the top. I wanna have some variation. Uh, so to do this, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a noise texture. So again, noise texture, it's varied across the surface. And I'm gonna use this to mix RGB. So this is gonna be the uh, factor. It's gonna be the uh, where is this happening kind of uh, slider, right? Um, I'm gonna use this with multiply and I'll explain it in a sec. So first of all, I'm gonna copy this color over. So control C, control V, uh, plug this in right here and view it. Um, the idea is I wanna multiply this color uh, by black. Uh, why do I do that? Well, uh, the idea is we take this original color and wherever we multiply this with black, it should get darker. Well, where are we gonna multiply it? Uh, wherever this uh, noise is. So you can see some areas are darker than others. So uh, because of this, I think I'm gonna brighten up the bun just a bit and maybe make it yellower. I don't know. No, that kind of looks like a potato now. We can always mess with it. Uh, this is a good way to add in variation. So now we can actually mess with the quality of our uh, noise. Well. Uh, what do I want? Well, I want texture coordinates. I'm going to set this to object coordinates just because I know it's never distorted. Uh, generated coordinates tend to be a bit stretched. Although I do believe they move with deformation. So if you move the displacement, it might be useful. Either way, I'm going to bring down the scale. So it's kind of like low frequency changes, maybe even lower. Um, let's see what that looks like. I do want it to be a little less subtle than that. So we add in a color ramp just to bump up the contrast. So you can see we're making the dark areas darker. And we can make them even darker. Although if you go too far, if you go too far, like you put them right next to each other, uh, you're going to get this. This is more like uh, what a, uh, how am I, how am I going to do this? This is more what a fill in the word in your head. It's a, no, it's a woman who wears a certain kind of leopard print. You understand. Uh, this is a good way to add in some variation. And we can always mess around with this later. Um, some things I like to do with this is I always like to bring up the detail just so the boundary uh, between these is more detailed than you know this, right? I want a lot of detail, maybe a bit of roughness so it's a bit more distributed. I don't know, something like this. We can always play around with it later. Um, this is a good start, okay? Uh, there's more things we can do. We can also do the same kind of, and you know what, whatever. I'll just do it. Uh, we can add in another noise texture. The idea here is before we even do this multiplication, I'm going to sample two colors, so not just this one, but I'm gonna make like a modified kind of yellowish version. So just two colors. Same idea as before, noise texture, this time instead of multiply, uh, you set it to mix, mix. And make sure to set the uh, seed value to something different, just so it's not using the same pattern for where to darken and where to vary. Um, so the idea here is, let's bring down a color ramp, is I want uh, some parts to be orange, some parts to be yellow, I'm sure there's a rule to this if you actually know what baking is. I don't, um, so I'm just gonna do it. So you can see there's a bit of variation. And then we uh, send this through here, and then it gets darkened. Um, so all of this is just to say we're adding in variation. That's the point. Um, secondly, how do we do this? Um, or you know what? Not secondly. Let's finish the bun, or the top part of the bun. Um, it's smooth. It shouldn't be smooth. There should be crackles and a bit of noise and stuff like that, so let's add it in. Uh, this is all gonna be normal information. Um, so let's add in yet another, and this is where it gets a bit risky. You don't want to add in too many noise textures if you can help it. It just slows down to render, um, but whatever, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to take noise texture. We're going to do this. We are going to set the number. Let's use object coordinates again uh, to remove distortion. I'm going to set the scale to something like huge, just so we have very fine detail. So this is like the grain of the, I don't I know nothing about baking. Either way, this is like the quality of the bread. Uh, we're gonna take this, we wanna convert it into normal mapping. Bump node does that, what, what does it do? Um, it takes height information, in other words, just black and white image, takes it and converts it into normal information using the gradient, blah, blah, blah. You connect it to normal. Um, and you can see this is just gonna give it more of a bread-like uh, quality. And you might wanna like bring down the strength of this. Although, instead of bringing down the uh, strength here, uh, what you could always do is, um, before it even reaches the height, you get to multiply it by like a small number. So 0.5 makes it half as strong. 0.1 makes it like a tenth as strong. And then zero makes it not even be there. So I'm gonna do something very light, it seems. So like 0.05, and then we could even make it even a bit smaller, like 300. 
and this really does help it look like uh, bread. So this is before, it's kind of too smooth, and after. Okay, it's kind of a big deal. Um, and we can always change this stuff later, but for now, that's fine. Okay, um, at this no, 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 we should add in the cracks. I don't know if I actually will, but let me just show you how to do it. Boron, <laughs> what? Uh, you wanna add in a Voronoi texture for this one, because this is an easy way to generate cracks. Uh, you change this from F1 to, I think distance to edge, or maybe smooth F1. I guess you have a couple options. Distance to edge is kind of the obvious way to add in some cracks, but I do like smooth F1. Um, either way, you take this, same thing as before, you do a color ramp. This is just to define some like lines and stuff like this, and you want these to be pretty harsh. Uh, so we're gonna bring up the scale just so they're smaller. You know what, at this point, I'm gonna go distance to edge. Um, but same idea. This is just to add in a bit of crackle to the bread. So I'm making this like very hyper sharp. And I guess we could kind of reverse this so this is black and the lines are white. It shouldn't matter too much, but you know, it's a thing you can do. I wanna bring this really close and maybe make the crackles a little bigger. Um, this is just something we can also incorporate into our bump node. Well, how do we do both the uh, noise, right? Um, and this, uh, well, just to combine anything, you always kind of do addition. It's just kind of the way you want to think about it. So uh, it won't look uh, great, kind of looks uh, horrible, in fact. Uh, but you can see this is a way you add cracks. Again, how do you make it look better? Uh, you can either add in a multiply right here to make it softer, or in fact, since we have a color ramp, you could just bring down the bright areas closer to black. The closer it is to black, uh, the less visible it will be. Okay, um, and you can also play with the scale just to see what would look good. So do I want it to be a very small number? Maybe, or maybe do I want it to be a very big number? I don't know. Um, but the point is you can always mess around with this, but you don't want it to be too visible is the idea. Okay, um, I'm gonna call this part of the bun done. Let's talk about how to do this bottom part uh, where it's just bread and stuff like that. Like how do we transition between two materials? Well. Uh, we could either do that with a selection, right? We, we select all of these faces on the bottom. However, then we're gonna have an incredibly sharp edge. Um, instead, what I like to do is we are gonna make a custom transition, okay? How are we gonna do that? Well, if we take a coordinate system, I guess generated, we can play around with these, uh, separate by X, Y, Z. So I'm taking generated coordinates. I'm saying, oh, we could separate by X, Y, Z. Um, the Z one is gonna be black at the bottom and then it's gonna rise to one, okay? Uh, so in other words, we're going, uh, imagine the bounding box, the cube that contains this, the bottom of the cube is Z equals zero, the top of the cube is Z equals one, okay? Um, this is a great way to make a transition, why? Uh, because if we were to use something like a math, I don't know, a math, you could either do a greater than just to make a cutoff, or if you do a subtract, and the idea here is you could do kind of a soft cutoff. Either way, you can separate top and bottom is the idea, okay? Well, what do we want to do with this? Well, first of all, let me make it a bit sharper, just so one doesn't bleed into another. So I'm just gonna bring this over here, just so the transition's harsher, but still not like a perfect line, like the, the greater than's too intense, right? So there's just a bit of a fade. Uh, what do I want to do with this? Well, I want to add in another BSDF, I guess a principled BSDF. So I want you to think of uh, all this, everything we've done, one material, and this BSDF's another material. We mix them together, by the way, that's control shift right click drag if you care. Um, you use this as the factor. So let's connect this as the factor. And I guess I flip them. And now you can see we basically have control of the top, which is the same thing as before, nothing's changed. Uh, but the bottom is now completely controlled by this BSDF. Why? Because we're mixing them. How are we mixing them uh, with this factor? Okay, cool. Uh, so what do we want? Well, first of all, uh, let's work on the boundary. And once we've worked on the boundary, let's work on what the bottom will actually look like. So I want it to be kind of there. I want it to be a bit sharper, like 0.04. Um, but mainly, mainly, you can see it's not very even, right? Some of it's, it's kind of like a wave. It shouldn't just be this like perfectly straight line going across. Um, well, how do we add in uh, this distortion? Here's where it gets a bit complicated. Uh, don't worry about it too much if you don't understand the math. Uh, we wanna mess with the texture coordinates here before we even separate by X, Y, Z, right? So if this is all gonna depend on our uh, Z coordinate, well, if we can mess with it before it even gets there, well, then it's gonna be distorted. How do I do this? Well, we add in yet again another noise and we might be able to outsource one of these from before, although they're not really the right setting. So I'm just gonna add in yet another noise texture. It might slow it down, but whatever. 
you take these two ideas, this coordinate system and this noise, which is effectively just randomness, and we want to combine them. So you can do it like that, I believe. So that is going to mix, I guess we should use the color just to get X, Y, and Z information or RGB. Uh, we're going to mix these two together. So in other words, we're taking our coordinate system that was here before, just generated coordinates. We're adding in randomness. And uh, you're going to notice it doesn't really do what you expect. Um, th there's a reason for this point is it the random values on average adding 0.5. So there's a shift happening. Don't worry about it. Set this to linear light. Okay, this is going to take care of it. There's a way to do this manually, but this is just a way to take care of it. Okay, uh, we're going to do, do it like this. Before we mess around with this too much, I just want to raise uh, this a bit more just so we have a bit more leeway. And the way I want you to think about this is this slider, basically what it shows is how much distortion there's going to be. And I think we might want to flip these. Yeah, uh, it's going to show the distortion of the boundary. Okay, so let's uh, view it from the side. Um, so when it's zero, we get a flat line. When it's a bit more, we get um, distortion. What does the distortion look like? It's dependent on the noise. Okay. Um, so first of all, let's bring this back down because I guess I had it flipped. So this is the boundary between materials in some sense, even though this is all one container, one material. It's really the boundary between BSDFs. Uh, we want to have this be a high detail boundary, so like very sharp uh, stuff going on. Also high roughness, maybe. So this is low roughness. It's kind of soft. High roughness makes it kind of battered and it's noisy is the point. And then this slider is just how much overall noise should there be. Uh, the issue is if you bring it too low, um, if you don't have your subtraction, like your cutoff set high enough, right? Um, if you do not have that, you're going to have this issue. So you just want to bring it low enough uh, that the whole bottom is kind of filled in. But also, I guess we could raise, raise the boundary just a bit to give us a bit of leeway, uh, but not too high that there's that issue. So I'm just going to mess around with these values until I roughly get what I want. And I think that's good. I mean... It should be a bit lower. So let's bring it lower and then let's mess with this until we don't have too much of that issue. A tiny bit isn't the biggest deal. Okay, cool. So now we've uh, defined a custom boundary. Again, this is all for the factor of this mixed shader, which means you change the color, it only affects the bottom. Okay, uh, now that we have control of this area, what do we want it to look like? Well, it should be bread. And I think this part's extremely rough, like it shouldn't be reflective. So like something like 0.9 roughness, I don't know. Um, it should look like that. Uh, for the color, for the color, I believe we want it to be like slightly yellow. I don't know. We can mess around with this later. Just a bready color. I think that's a good one. Um, then what do I want to do with it? The main thing that makes it look like bread is it's kind of porous and stuff like that. In other words, normal mapping. The same thing that made this look like a, a bun. It's the bump, right? Uh, to do this, we're going to do Voronoi because it's good for this kind of stuff. Different kind of noises or textures are good for different scenarios. We're going to use Voronoi because uh, the way it's generated is it scatters a bunch of points, kind of like point distribute. <laughs> um, it scatters a bunch of points and uh, gives us the distance from them or distance to the closest point. In other words, it's a bunch of circles is the point. And that's what bread is. It's kind of like porous circles, like a sponge. Uh, we take this, we bring up the scale to increase the number of circles. So you can see now you can really see what's going on here. Uh, we take this, we filter it as always through a color ramp just to get a bit more control here. So I'm thinking we bring this up and then you can really start seeing the circles. Uh, we take this, we filter it through a bump and then we can always mess with, around with it later. Again, we convert it, we take height, right? And we convert it into normal information. And now let's see what it looks like. Okay, it's a good start, it doesn't look good. Uh, but to make it look good, I guess it's looking not porous enough. So let's bump this up to like 100 and maybe that's too much, maybe like 75, uh, you can see. Oh, there's hammering on outside. Sorry about that. Um, th this is a good way to start. You can also change the randomness value. This is going to make it a grid, <laughs> right? This is Voronoi as a grid. I guess you want to keep randomness at full. Um, but some other things you could play around with, I haven't messed around with this too much. You can change the uh, type of Voronoi nonsense to different things. I don't know what all of these mean, uh, but some of them look more like bread. I think F2 kind of looks better than F1. And then you could also play around with uh, what is smooth F1. Well, it's F1 where you can like choose how sharp the cutoff is going to be. In my case, I think F2 is kind of the way to go. It really does kind of look like bread. It really does. Um, only thing I would change here, this uh, cutoff, um, that is again the factor. I feel like it could be a bit sharper. So I'm just going to bring this again closer, just so it's a bit of a harsher thing. Uh, you could also add in some noise here or some random color. Um, just in the same method as we did before, like nothing changes. 
Um, however, at this point, we're really starting to add in too many noises if we do that. Do that. It's not a big deal, uh, but it's just a thing. Okay. Um, at this point, uh, let's make the bottom bun. This time I'll speed through it because you already know the process. Um, we just need to basically change some sliders. So we're gonna take our top bun material. We're gonna create a clone of it. So this is now not the same top bun material, right? This is different. If we change a node here, um, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't copy it over to the other one. It's independent. Uh, so this one's gonna be bottom bun. Um, generally, everything should be the same. The only difference is this bread line uh, should be at a different spot, right? Because it's at a different area. Well, how do we find it? Well, now uh, generated coordinates refer to this object where uh, Z, Z0 is here um, and Z1 is up here. Uh, we kind of want to flip um, everything we've been doing. So if we bring the subtraction, I don't know, it's one of these directions, the color ramp might be the issue. So for now, let's actually just view it like this. Uh, we want to bring it up. So instead of 0.02, maybe it's like one minus 0.02. I think that makes sense. Uh, we take this, we send it through the color ramp, and I think the color ramp settings should be fine. Seems like it's fine. Let's see what it looks like. No, it's inverted. Well, easy fix. Uh, we could either flip the uh, color ramp or uh, you can flip these sockets like that. Um, okay, we need to change the settings just a bit because you know different objects are distorted uh, to different amounts. Uh, well, uh, I guess we just want to bring this down a bit. And... Um, you could, ch I guess we want it to be a bit lower. I guess uh, since these are independent from each other, we can have different uh, noise values. So maybe this one, I want the boundary to be super noisy because it seems like it would be a little too sharp otherwise. Um, I think that's pretty good. Um, is anything technically different in the bottom bun? It seems like it's a bit brighter, less cooked. I don't know. Again, I don't know anything about this. Um, so what we could do is if that's the case, uh, we can make these colors that it's using slightly brighter. So this is just to make the bottom bun brighter. Again, the, the reason this could be uh, looking this way is because of our lighting situation, where um, well, whatever HDRI we have, again, don't forget, we have a lighting environment. Um, it might just be causing that. But you can see this is a good start. It really looks good. And again, literally everything we did here from the displacement, right, displacement, uh, to the sesame seeds, to the materials, entirely procedural, okay? Uh, so at any point, I can go back to the geometry nodes. I could be like, okay, how many sesame seeds should there be? Uh, I mean, it looks kind of right, but maybe there should be a few more. I could either decrease the distance or bump up the density for that distance. I think we're going to have to decrease the distance in this case. And this is going to make it so some sesame seeds are close to each other, but again, not close enough uh, to be intersecting, Okay. Um, what else? Sesame seed. I feel like we could make it a bit darker. So let's just do that really quickly, I guess. Um, so I'm just going to take this. I'm going to darken it a tiny bit. Uh, we could also randomize this. I don't think it uses the same thing as particle info. I guess this will be a time to find out. No. So normally with, um, when you distribute it using particles, we have this. Otherwise, or what am I trying to say? I don't know what I'm trying to say is the point. Uh, when you distribute with particle info, with particles instead of geometry nodes, you get this random thing. Um, technically, I do believe there's a way to do this with geometry nodes, right? We have attributes here as well, uh, just like the other, but this part keeps being updated, so I'm not gonna mess around with it uh, too much. So like, I don't know which thing we, we would call, uh, but if you can call the right thing, we can see it. So like, I don't know. People have had some issues with this even on the Discord, so it doesn't seem to be working, but in theory, you type in one of the attributes from before, you pick the right one of these, and then it should show up, and then you can, you know, randomize it. Um, but um, but um, I don't think I'm going to vary the randomness here. Uh, there's probably a way to do it using, like, texture coordinates from Instancer, uh, but this ain't the time to do it freeballing. But maybe I'll go back to that on a uh, future tutorial. Anyways, uh, probably the longest bun tutorial anybody's ever seen, but also the most useful, question mark? I don't know. I mean... Probably nobody talked about how to do it procedurally. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this part of the tutorial. In the next one, we're going to be messing with meat and bacon or maybe the lettuce. And I don't know. We're, we're going to be doing another part uh, more so than usual. I just want to emphasize this since I'm really putting it at the end of a long tutorial. Uh, Patreon exists. The list of people on the right, they're not sesame seeds, okay? Right? They are active patrons. There's something like 680. It always changes. Uh, these are people that, first of all, are supporting both this and this uh, CG Matter channel default 
all to keep in CG Matter. Um, but they're also getting access to a ton of stuff, okay? They're getting access to blend files. I will be posting every step of this um, on the Patreon so you can get the uh, custom blend file. Um, they're good, also getting access to exclusive tutorials sometimes. Uh, those that I do not post to either channel, those are somewhat infrequent, but they exist. Sometimes I do tutorial series and stuff like that. Um, additionally, behind the scenes, Discord, whatever, it's all there. If you care and if you want to be part of it, there is a link in the description for that. Okay? Um, otherwise, you know, I guess you've already made up your mind, but Patreon's a pretty bopping place. And I like to always put this at the end uh, because it makes it uh, less intrusive. So either way, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned a lot, okay? <laughs> I think you probably did. Um, in the next one, we're gonna be doing some other part of this and then just kind of stacking it in here. Oh, and by the way, I just wanna mention, um, this uh, scattering, uh, it's, it's, uh, it moves with the object, right? Um, it doesn't like redistribute this if you like scale or move it, which is good because we're going to be animating this. Um, anyways, hopefully you enjoyed a thing. And other than that, uh, see ya. Bye-bye. <laughs>